it's pretty obvious you know organic chemistry and organic synthesis. And also you know a lot about what would be required to build an actual living cell. And these, uh, these prebiotic simulation experiments are either producing things that aren't relevant to living cells, or they're cheating, or more likely they're doing both. Uh, cheating in the sense that the, the intelligent agent is using a, a, a complex recipe of his or her own design, is buying purified reagents off the shelf, and is using sophisticated organic synthesis techniques that would not be available to undirected uh, simpler molecules on a prebiotic earth. So at, at every, every step of the way, this is, this is really suspect science. Um, so I think it's just, it, it's, it's fascinating. We're delighted to give you a chance to, to, uh, to provide the other side of this story. Um, the, the, the last thing I want to ask you about is, um, well, actually is the, the deep, the deepest problem of all that's long fascinated me, which is the information problem. And this, we'll go back to the, we're moving back from the rhetoric to the science now, but, uh, you're showing that the, the, the building homochiral amino acids under prebiotic simulation in, in, in uh, in realistic conditions is, is, it's not, it's not it's plausible. Not known. No, uh, nobody's linking the, linking the amino acids together is very difficult, if not impossible to do on prebiotic conditions. Even a little water messes the whole thing up. Uh, and we've heard about how <laughs> life began in a warm little pond in a mm -hmm. prebiotic ocean for years. Even if you get things to link up, they're linked up in the, in, in the, with the wrong orientation, not, not with exclusively peptide bonds. But what about the even more difficult problem of getting the right sequence of the 20 different amino acids to form so that the right kind of uh, interactions between them will cause them to fold into three-dimensional shapes that will perform proteins. Have prebiotic uh, chemists made any prog progress on this sequence specificity problem, or sometimes called the information problem? We call it the information problem because in living cells, the information in the DNA directs the synthesis of the protein molecules, amino acid by amino acids, to ensure that the right sequence of amino acids are linked together. But in a prebiotic context, is there any process that can help us solve that information problem? Zero. They have made zero progress on this. And I mean literally none. Nobody knows how to control the arrangement of these. Nobody knows how to control the arrangement. What they will say is that you the, the proteins came from an RNA template. And that RNA template might have been the original form, but then how do you get the RNA to arrange with the information? And Dave says, I don't know what I'm talking about with information. Lee Cronin says, I don't know what I'm talking about with information. Yet they have never put forward where the information comes from because you have to have specified information to have the arrangements of the amino acids for a protein to fold. And as Lee Cronin has said himself, you might get one protein made, but that wouldn't do it. The one molecule would never be enough. It would never be enough. And these things don't mimic themselves. They don't make themselves. People will say RNA duplicates itself. It does not. It does not duplicate itself. What has only been done is you get very small portions of it duplicated, less than 10%, and yep. only when they've been highly Programmed, engineered, yeah, engineered I, to try. They to even call the, the 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 scientists who do this work call themselves ribozyme engineers. Yeah. So they're engineering the molecules, yeah. which is um, you know, there's a, uh, a quotation in Origin of Life research literature that's uh, often taken as uh, canonical in the sense that it really defines what has to be the problem that has to be solved. It's from Bert Olaf Kuppers, a German. Uh, origin of life biochemist. He says the origin of life is basically equivalent to the problem of the origin of biological information. Now you've shown that it's, it, it, it's equivalent to actually far more than that. You've got to you, just, just building the molecules or the, the subunits out of which the information bearing molecules are formed is extremely difficult and has not Correct. been demonstrated under realistic prebiotic conditions. But the problem of the information at the higher level is, is has not you're saying there's been absolutely no, no progress on that whatsoever. Correct. Correct. There's been no progress on this whatsoever. So origin of life people, as far as I see, they never address it. 
they can't even get the medium made upon which the information is stored. Very we have, well to, said. We have exactly to have right. the medium right. yeah. to store it. And the medium is secondary. The information is primary. We can't even get the medium upon which to store the information. That's right. Well, as you know, I wrote a whole book about the information problem called Signature in the Cell. But it's, it's uh, extremely uh, enlightening for me to talk to you about the problems at the lower levels of getting the medium made, the, the, the molecules, the, the, the smaller level molecules made. Um, we, we are delighted to, to host this series of videos because we think this, this content is so important. And um, we, want, we also want to make clear that we are delighted that Professor Dave has uh, initiated this critique of Dr. Tour. I mentioned in the last video that, that we produced that I had a supervisor when I was doing my PhD work in Cambridge who used to say, beware the sound of one hand clapping. If there's an argument on one side, there's bound to be an argument on the other. And that one of the best ways to test the strength of an argument is to see how well it withstands critical scrutiny. Now, uh, there's, a, there's a complex dialectic here. I'm not sure who started the argument exactly, but Dr. Tour certainly has been critiquing publicly these origin of life simulation experiments. In response to that, uh, Professor Dave has attacked Professor Tour. In response to that, there's been some back and forth. What we're delighted to do here is to, to uh, present the, some of this back and forth so that you, our audience, are in a position to evaluate who has the stronger argument. My views on this are probably pretty clear. I think Dr. Tour is one of the world's finest organic chemists. He knows what he's talking about, and the critiques he's making are very compelling. Um, but you can decide, and you can now you now have the wherewithal to do that. In that, not only are we producing videos that are putting some of this discussion in context, but Dr. Tour has a whole series of videos in response, not just to Professor Dave, but to the experts upon uh, which he has based his critique. And so you can evaluate both sides of this argument for yourself. And we're right. we're hoping that lots of you uh, have the patience to to uh, to view these. And, and, then, and then follow up with uh, looking at Dr. Tour's videos and comparing them to the content that's already out there online from Professor Dave, Dave Farina. So, yeah, so, so if I could mention, Steve, that, yeah, that on, my, on my YouTube channel, DR James Tour, so if you go to YouTube, just type in DR James Tour, you will see this series. So I already had a series on Origin of Life. It's, a, it's actually a 13-part series on Origin of Life where I describe all of these basic problems. In response to that, Dave Farina came out with a two-part uh, where he brought in experts. And so I go right after the experts. I think but it, it may, our, our, my video series on these experts is going to come out very soon. It might even come out before this video that we're making right now that I'm making with you, Steve. So, but in any case, it's it, this is going to be out there. So if you just watch DR James Tour, go there and subscribe. You'll see when these things come out. And I'm taking on the experts. We are going to take them out one by one. We are just going to take them down because Dave in, in Farina, the, in the intellectual sense, of course. Yeah, in the intellectual <laughs> yeah. sense, one by one, we're going to take them out. Answer the arguments. Yes, and, and this is fascinating because what we have now is the, the internet has become a, a place where a very spirited scientific argument is taking place about one of the most fundamental questions that science has ever raised, which is what caused life on Earth to arise. This is a question of, of immense scientific interest. It has larger philosophical implications. And so it really is worth the back and forth that's going on here. Uh, Jim Tour, Professor Dave, right. Jim Tour, and now Professor Dave citing the experts doing origin of life research and Tour responding to them. Yeah, so I'm responding the, to his experts. And, and I agree with you. I want to, I thank God for Dave Farina. I mean, without him, I would have just, I, I, I wouldn't have bothered with this thing. It's because of Dave Farina. We have Dave Farina to thank for all of these videos he's coming out. He's created a tremendous platform for discussing a really foundational and important issue that is both scientific and philosophical in character. I think it's one of the most interesting uh, subjects in science that you could study. I did a PhD on origin of life biology I, in, in a philosophy of science department. It's one of the really great questions.